Hey fellow tennis nerds, so I talked to Nicola about doing a reaction video, something that's completely new to me that I thought was pretty cringy in the past is that like doing a reaction video, but we talked about it on the phone today, so I'm going to try to react to Nicola's video about the top five strings on the rec level, on the pro level. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you enjoy it and we'll see. If you do, I will do more of these in the future and I hope uh, Nicola enjoys it as well. So let's play the video and see what he has to say about the top five best tennis strings of all time, pro and rec level. Hey guys, in today's video, I want to give you the top five tennis strings of all time for the recreational level and also for the pro level. And I'm going to start with the pro level with a caveat that the strings that I'm about to list are not necessarily going to be strings that you should play with. Some of you might be able to pull these strings off, but the first part of this video for most of you guys is going to be informative. And the second part of the video are going to be the strings that I recommend for the recreational level and the strings that I place in the top five of all time. And let's get started with the top five professional level strings of all time. And coming in at number five is the Wilson Natural Gut. Now this string was used by Roger Federer and he used it in a hybrid setup. And why are natural gut strings so popular? Well, we have to look at the history of tennis because the vast majority of professional players used to primarily use natural gut. This all changed in the early 2000s, which I'm going to get to later on in this video. And what does natural gut give professional level players? It gives them a combination of power, feel, and control. And remember that tennis back in the day was played differently. Players relied a lot more on feel than they do nowadays. Now, one important word that I'm going to use today when I'm describing these strings is responsiveness. And this word will perfectly describe how professional tennis evolved and how the materials, especially the strings, changed over time. But also responsiveness is going to be a super important factor when it comes to choosing a string when you are at the recreational level. And I'm going to rate all the strings that I'm talking about on a scale of 1 to 10 for responsiveness. And the Wilson Natural Gut gets a 7 out of 10 for responsiveness. So I'm keen to hear your opinions here. Should I rate things as well? I find sometimes ratings, I mean, I know it's very sellable, marketable. It's quite good for engagement, but sometimes I struggle with them because if you rate something and then you always have to correlate it to other stuff and sometimes things are in different categories or have different characteristics. So the ratings don't really add up and then it's tough to compare. So it's a good question for my reviews in the future and for upcoming Tennis Nerd reviews. Tennis Nerd reviews also on the website. Do you find it engaging to have a scoring system of some kind, one to 10, for example, which seems to be the most popular scale? Or do you think I should stick to try to describe the feeling and the level of the racket as well as possible? I not, might not listen to you because I have some, some strong feelings around this. And sometimes I try the scoring and it doesn't really quite work. But maybe if you're an overwhelming majority that thinks that that's some kind of scoring, a bit similar like they do on Tennis Warehouse would be good. That's, uh, that's uh, something I'll, I'll look into for sure. And all the things Nicola says so far about the natural gut string is uh, all thumbs up for me. I, I completely agree. Holds tension amazingly well. Nice feel. Nowadays, people use it in hybrids. But back in the day before the, the polis and the co-polis, they used to use it in a full bed. What is responsiveness? In other words, when you hit a ball with a string, does this string do a lot of the work for you? If the answer is yes, then you have a responsive string on your hands. If you play with a string that is not very responsive, in other words, that now the string itself is not going to give you that much power. You have to be the one that's going to generate this power. The fourth greatest tennis string in the history of professional tennis is the Babolat Touch VS Natural Gut String. It is the most widely used natural gut string at the professional level, and it's still used by some players today, mostly in a hybrid setup. But back in the day, players used to have a full bet of the Babolat VS. How does the Babolat Natural Gut compare to the Wilson Natural Gut? It is very similar. It's very difficult to feel a difference between these two strings. I played with both. So what I said about the Wilson Natural Gut applies to the Babolat string as well. The third greatest string of all time at the professional level is the Babolat RPM Blast. And you see this little thing right here used by Rafa. And this is really true. Rafa uses this string, but not only Rafa, many other professional level players, but also high level players in general, high level juniors, and this string actually is used 
by some players at the recreational level. Now, what makes the Pavlov RPM Blast string so great? Well, it's its control and responsiveness. So on a scale from 1 to 10, I'm going to rate the Babylon RPM Blast as 6 out of 10. So, so I have to stop here and comment a bit. Uh, it's quite a jump to go from the natural gut strings to go to a uh, polyester string like the RPM Blast. It's a, it's a good string. It's pretty firm and one of the stiffer strings out there. And it's great when it's fresh, but it drops tension relatively quickly. And uh, But if you're like a string breaker like Rafa, you hit heavy, hard, big top spin. Obviously, 1.35 gauge as well, or sometimes 130, but then then you get fresh strings, fresh rackets all the time. It's fine. But but for some recreational players, I know this string, and not singling out this string. It's it's in general for polyester strings, they do hurt people's arms, especially if you play it too long. Either you string it, you know, too high, whether that's about 55 pounds or even about 50 pounds with with some arms, some players, some rackets. The issue is that if you use a string like a polyester string that actually drops tension quickly and then goes dead and loses its elasticity, then it's uh, it's a dead string. It's very bad. It doesn't really absorb any any um, shock. So then it's really bad for the arm. So just good keep that in mind. Quite a big step from gut to bubble at RPM blast. But let's see where where Nicholas is going. Not quite as responsive as natural gut, but it is not as dead as some other polyester strings. Why do I say that? Because you see here what it says on the back? This is a monofilament polyester string, which means that it's a single material in this string. And these type of strings tend to be more responsive in general. Now, one downside of this type of string is that because the string is a little bit stiffer, it doesn't provide you with the same type of feel that you would get on a natural gut string. This string is designed for power tennis. The players have swing paths that promote topspin, which most professional players do. Uh, this type of string will produce more topspin, and it is one of the greatest strings that combines the factors of responsiveness and control. In other words, you don't necessarily have to swing like a madman to get power. This string will help you out quite a bit. The second greatest string in the history of tennis at the professional level is the Luxilon Alu Power. If you take a look at the ATP Top 100, you're going to see that the vast majority of players use the Alu Power string. And if you take a look at the WTA rankings, you're going to see a little bit less of this string, but still there's going to be a lot of female players that use the Alu Power string. It is by far the most popular string at the professional level. All right, so we're at Alu Power, which I thought would be at number one. Uh, so I'm cu curious to see what is at number one now. Uh, the RPM blast string, uh, responsive. Yeah, it's relatively responsive string. It is one of those those uh, polyesters that that is firm, and uh, not something I generally want to recommend. It is a very good polyester string. That's why it's so many players use it. Sometimes what is used by the pros is also very much dictated by the sponsorships they get, uh, the endorsements, and they don't have a huge selection of strings to try. I, I test all strings that come out, or I, it feels like that. I test so many strings. And pros, maybe if they're sponsored by Bubble Up, they don't have obviously a huge selection. It needs to really be tailored to their game, meaning it really needs to respond well to hard, heavy topspin. Now, when it comes to responsiveness, I'm going to rate this string a 2 out of 10. So in other words, it is a string that's very dead. So you're probably thinking, Nick, why would players like a string like this? Well, the vast majority of players like the feeling of being able to hit full out on the ball. So if you have a monofilament string that's very responsive, let's say a string that I rate 7 out of 10 or 8 out of 10, this is not going to be a string that's suited for the elite level because players would not be able to control the ball as well as they can with a string like this. Because of the deadness of the string, players have the ultimate control to be able to swing fully on their strokes. Now, this is super important because number 5 and number 4 were the natural gut strings and number 3 was the RPM Blast especially the natural gut strings are going to be strings that you can use at the recreational level. And some recreational players will find quite a bit of comfort playing with the RPM Blast because it is a monofilament string and it is responsive as long as it's strung lower than 50 pounds. However, there's going to be very few, if any, recreational players who are going to be able to pull off a string like this. And why do I say that? Because... What a professional player feels and what you are feeling are two completely different things. A professional level player can comfortably, without getting any physical issues, use 
a dead string like this. Why? Because they have the swing speed, they have the control and the strength to be able to pull off a dead string like this. This is interesting. Uh, Nikola usually makes a very strong distinction distinction between pro players and recreational players. I think that's uh, that's good in a way, sometimes maybe too extreme. But in this case, I would say, I mean, these are both stiff polyesters. And I would say RPM Blast is a stiffer polyester if you look at the Tennis Warehouse University ratings than Alu Power. Uh, they're both stiff. They're both not the one I would advise to like players who have a history of tennis elbow or maybe play with shorter swings. You need a bit more help from the string, a bit more trampolining in the string bed where the string gives you more and, and bends more and shoots the ball out. Uh, you could argue that um, that RPM Blast has a bit more of that effect, but it's still a very relatively dead string and, and a firm string. And same uh, with Luxlon Olu Power. Uh, the interesting thing about Olu Power that some people really talk about is that that it's like it has some power in it. That's what, you know, I don't like all these rank ratings on the back of the box where it says like power, comfort, feel, whatever. Control eight nine eight nine nine ten. You know, it's it's uh, these are just mumbo jumbo marketing. You know, so it has some pocketing all the power, and which uh, some pros really like. Uh, but it, it goes dead that very quickly as well. Two flagship strings, uh, they should be on the top five list as they are super popular on the pro level. Uh, but these are two strings that are not as different in terms of of recommending towards club or recreational players and uh, yeah if you want to use poly uh, i think he is uh, completely right to say that you should go below 50 pounds maybe even lower like maybe even go try 44 45 pounds if you really want to make sure you have a bit better comfort and a bit more give in the string but you want to make sure the racket actually does something for you and just doesn't act like a board very strong players can play with really high tensions because they swing so hard but if you don't perceive yourself as a guy who swings for the fences i would definitely consider playing with with a much lower tension because you, you get more. I mean, you can ask Adrian Manarino who plays with like 22 pounds sometimes or 24, you know, and uh, that creates like a really forgiving string bed in the sense the whole string bed feels like a pillow. He wants to shoot the ball out and with good timing, uh, good footwork and um, touch, he controls that. That's something that's very kind of unique to his game. But the same can go for, for club level players. If they want to have some comfort, some help from the string, you can really drop down on the polyester string. Once it goes dead, however, you really need to change it. That's a bit of, bit of an arm killer. Okay, let's keep listening to, to Nikola. What happens with recreational players that put a string like this on their racket is that the string will give them absolutely nothing. It's going to be completely dead. And now they're forced to swing bigger than they ever have in order to get the same amount of power that they normally have. And now naturally there's a big chance that your shoulder is going to start hurting or even worse that you might get tennis elbow. And coming in at number one as the greatest tennis string of all time, the string that truly revolutionized tennis is the Luxilon Big Banger original. This string came around in the early 2000s. It was first used by Gustavo Querton. And this string revolutionized tennis because polyester strings have been around way before this string came out. In fact, in the 90s, where I still played in juniors and then transitioned into the adult circuit, I used monofilament polyester strings. And then towards the end of the 90s, early 2000s, I started noticing that a lot of my friends that I was training with who played tennis at the high level started to switch to this string or strings that are very similar to this one. Now, I never liked the dead feeling of this string, but I could see the advantage of it because basically what this string allowed players to do is to swing at full speed without losing control. When Agassi first tried this string at the tournament in Rome, he renamed this string to Cheetalon because he didn't think that this string should be legal. He thought it was as if he was cheating having this string on his racket because for two hours he barely missed any balls. Because you have to understand that the elite level players couldn't play with the monofilament polyester strings that were on the market in the 90s. This string did not provide enough control for the players. And players in the 90s used to primarily play with natural guts. But once this string came on the market, slowly but surely, the vast majority of professional level players started switching to coal polyester strings because this string is not a monofilament. It is a coal polyester string, meaning there are additional materials inside of this string that 
dead ends the string and gives it that low power feeling when you hit the ball. Now, just like the alo power string, which is very similar to the original Big Banger, I don't recommend this string for the recreational level. Have I seen some recreational players being able to pull this string off? Yes, but these players are in the minority. Some players combine a string like this with natural gut and find comfort with it. As long as there are no physical issues, by all means, continue playing with the string. But for the vast majority of recreational players, this is a string that's gonna be quite a nightmare to play with, especially if you string it too tight. You're not gonna get anything out of it. The ball is gonna be dead on your racket, especially if you hit balls off center and you're gonna be forced to hit harder than you ever have to get the same amount of power, which will naturally result in some physical issues. And just like the Alu Power, I'm gonna give the Big Banger original uh, responsive rating of a two out of 10. These two strings are some of the deadest strings that are on the market. Okay, now comes the important part of this video where I talk about the top five tennis strings at the recreational level. These are all strings that I recommend. You can safely use this string. I'm also gonna give you recommendations on how tightly you should string. Now, one important caveat is that if you like your setup, whatever setup it may be, you have no physical problems and the string performs well, you're playing well in other words, don't make any changes. Why fix something that is not broken? I've been playing with the same string for many, many years, and the string that I used prior to my last string, I played with that one for 20 years. So there's absolutely no reason for you to switch. However, a lot of you guys are playing with the wrong string, or maybe you have some physical issues, or maybe you're just not playing well. And these top five strings are gonna be possibly a good solution for you. I, I agree, the original one is a classic. It's still very popular. And uh, you see some pros, Batista Gu, I think I saw recently. It's a good string. Uh, Kasatkina uh, has been using it. I'm not sure if she, she's using it anymore. Now she's an Artengo player. But there are plenty of pros that have and, and are still using our original. Uh, even my buddy Andrei Kuznetsov is using original as far as I know, or at least he did before. So it's a good string. It's also a dead string. Polyester strings are quite firm, but they come in very, very different types of firmness. So there are softer polyesters, which I think are okay to use for most uh, club level players. Uh, very soft, lively, have more of a springy feel to them, more of a lively feel. Like Nicolas says in this video, these kind of top of the line use on the Pro Tour, which I completely agree with, they are pretty dead uh, in terms of, of what they give to you extra. So you really need to string these strings low if you need extra help. And I think everybody needs to just look at themselves in the mirror. I try to do that and say, you know, what is working for my game? And I recently tested stringing up two racks of the exact same specs, one with poly and one with multifilament strings. And I'm going to publish that video relatively soon. Uh, interesting findings. I mean, for me, a multifilament string tends to to have not enough control. If I want to really swing out on the ball, I feel like my shots then, then go sail a bit long. But in terms of feel, it, it's like hitting with a pillow and such a nice feeling. So um, there are pros and cons, obviously, even uh, at a little bit slightly higher recreational level to play with multifilament strings. I have know some guys that do that and do it successfully. You will need to restring maybe a little bit more often, but it's it's definitely a pretty good option if you're, if you're hitting a bit flatter, maybe. Uh, but if you hit with a lot of spin, you're not going to get a lot from the multifilament string. But I'm very curious now. Uh, I agree with most of what Nikolai is saying. Maybe the responsiveness is tough to, to gauge because these are all firm strings. And I wouldn't say that RPM Blast is that much more responsive than the, the Luxlon strings, in my experience. Maybe a little bit, so he has a point there. Um, but overall, the ranking list is pretty good. And it's nice that he used both, like, gut, because it's such a popular string uh, in hybrids these days and, and still very frequent. And I think now that we're getting tennis becoming more and more physical, we're seeing it more and more among the pros that they are switching to having, you know, a poly and a natural gut. And coming in at number five is the Gosen polylon string. This is a mono filament. And again, we're going to talk about responsiveness. And on a responsiveness scale from one to 10, I'm going to rate this one a seven out of 10. I'm already curious because I haven't tried this string. Uh, ghosts and I've tried some ghosts and string, not the polylon. Uh, I'm curious now to straight away go to the tennis warehouse university and uh, just check the, the stiffness rating of that string. So uh, the Polylon has a stiffness which is close to all the power, still high tension loss and the same same spin potentials. I would go for a softer string for rec players. I mean, th this is still a, a relatively stiff string. 
And if the tension loss is that high, I would try to avoid it because, you know, then you, you it will drop tension and it will become unplayable quicker, you know, even if you don't hit that hard. So um, uh, not my choice, but, uh, but let's hear what he says. Uh, this particular string is a 1.24 millimeter or 17 gauge. So generally, when we're talking about gauges, the higher the gauges and the U.S. measurements, so if you're looking at 17 gauge or 18 gauge, this is going to be more playable for the type of strings that I'm recommending. In other words, they're going to be more responsive the higher the gauge goes. For all my European fans, this number has to be lower. So the strings that I'm going to recommend are all going to be 1.25 millimeters or lower. I recommend five. All right, this I have to just comment on and agree with. Uh, generally, like the higher the the measurement of the American, like it's, it's very confusing. I don't like it. It's like 15 L, which is like this thickest, you know, and roughly a 1.35 string and then goes up to 18, 19, 19, I think it's like 1.10 millimeter gauge. So it's thinner. So the higher the number there is, as the thinner it is. Uh, in the European way of, me of measuring it, which I think makes more sense, sorry, Americans, is that the thinner, the the lower the number, the, the thinner the string, right? So if you have a 1.25, 1.20, 1.15, it gets pretty thin. 1.30, 1.35, it's thicker. Uh, I like 1.25 or even 1.20 now with my Slinko Confidential that I'm currently using, but we'll see if, if, if I try something new. Did you string the Ghost and Polylon 50 pounds or less, despite the fact that this string is very playable it's very responsive in other words the string is going to do a lot for you you're not going to have to swing like a madman or a mad woman out there the string is going to do a little bit of the work for you which is going to be nice and your arm is going to be very thankful for that but despite that fact if you string too tight now it's going to feel like a board because this string despite being responsive and playable is somewhat stiff so for that reason my recommendation is that you string 50 pounds or less. And do not worry, I know on the racket it says the racket should be strung between 55 and 65 pounds. Disregard that. All right, so uh, he's right about like disregard string recommendations. Usually they're a huge span. They say, you know, 45 to 65, or I mean, you shouldn't string a poly 65. Or, or, I, I think most rec players shouldn't even string it at 55, which is pretty high. Polys are best used unless you're a pro. I know Karu strings very high from my tennis HQ, for example, but that suits his game and he hits, hits hard and flatter than many pros. Um, I would say that you, you try to go below 50 or around 50 pounds. Uh, I like 51. That's kind of my sweet spot. Then I sometimes go down 49. Or if it's a, a very powerful racket, I might have to go up to 53. But I, I usually feel the arm a bit more if I'm stepping up uh, beyond the 51 or, or 49 pounds mark. Now coming in at number four is the Luxilon 4G string. This is one of the Luxilon strings that I do recommend. And this is a string that's used all the way from the professional level to the recreational level. Now, why do I recommend this string from Luxilon and not others? Because this string is responsive. On a scale from 1 to 10, I would rate it a 6 out of 10. Now, it's super important that you... All right, I have to stop again. Um, sorry, Nicola. Uh, the 4G string is actually a, a kind of an arm unfriendly string. So I would not recommend this one. Uh, I feel like it's it's a great string. I, I mean, I really like it, but it is pretty firm. Uh, it, it's something I've even talked to pros about that I try to help with strings and so on. And a lot of pros go from full bed 4G at around 25 kilos or 55 pounds. They, they tend to start adding uh, gut strings to just save their arm a bit. We have Stefanos Tsitsipas, we have Alex Deminor. They're adding gut to the mix to soften that feel a little bit. Even though, I mean, I know in Stefanos' case, he's not in love with the with the hybrid setup idea, but he, he loves 4G as how it plays. So it's a great string. If you don't have any arm problems, definitely try it. I really like the strings, one of my favorite strings. So I do recommend that it, it should be on some kind of list, but it's not very arm friendly, where, where, it's where I would put a little bit of a of a warning. He might get to that. I just wanted to point that out. And if we look at the university, sorry if I'm getting too geeky or nerdy here, we can look at the 125 Luxalon. And as you can see here, it holds tension incredibly well. Uh, it's not the most spinny string, but and it like it's it's really good for energy returns. It's very responsive. He is 100% correct. That's why I love the string, but the stiffness is very high. So you really need to take this into account. The 260 is one of the highest polyesters I know, the famous polyesters. And it doesn't have a huge spin potential. So maybe it's one of those you can hybrid with a very soft poly to create some more movement of the string bed or something. But yeah, it's one of those that can be a little bit arm unfriendly. I do love it. It's a great string. One of my favorites. 
but you you would put like a little bit of a warning finger there for the stiffness. All right. Listen to what I'm about to say. Do not string the Luxilon tennis strings above 50 pounds. If you string the Luxilon 4G at 55 pounds or 60 pounds, it's going to feel more dead. So this string in particular has to be strung in the 40s for you to get the responsiveness out of it. Once it's strung too tight, it loses its responsiveness. And now you're stuck with the same problems that I described earlier, where you're not going to get the string to work for you and it's going to feel extremely uncomfortable. I recommend this string to many recreational players and it's always 17 gauge, 1.25 millimeters. And I have not heard one complaint, but these players also listen to me carefully and they don't allow the stringer to string the racket too tight. Because what's going to happen to you if you go to your stringer and you say, okay, I want my racket strung with 4G and I want 38 pounds. They're going to think you're insane. And they're going to say it's going to be too loose. It's going to be like a trampoline. Don't listen to that. You can safely string the Luxilon 4G between 35 and 40 pounds. It's going to feel perfect. It's not going to feel like a trampoline. On the other hand, you go too high in the tension, and now you got big problems on your hand. Now, coming in at number three is Head Hawk. And this is one of the best strings for the recreational level. And why do I say that? Because this is a monofilament polyester string. Now, these type of strings were around in the 90s and they're slowly disappearing. I will say that even though these strings are labeled as monofilament, it's not the same type of monofilament that was around in the 90s when I grew up, where you hit the strings against your hand and you had that loud pinging sound. That type of string doesn't ex exist anymore. Even strings of the same brand, for example, a string that I was using for 20 years was exactly the same string, but I noticed that the string would change over the years. So the manufacturer, without telling anybody, would start changing the materials in the string. I know they do this with rackets as well. It's very annoying, but it is what it is. But generally, when we have monofilament polyester strings... I agree that this is a good string. Um... It's not a string that I, I single out as something I'd put. Like maybe I like Hawk Touch a bit better, personally. Uh, I feel like it has a little bit more responsiveness, to be honest. Uh, but it's not a bad string. Uh, it's on a Head's best string. Head has actually improved their string, strings in general. I feel like they, before they, they, they were not so good. Uh, but now with, with Hawk Power and, and Lynx Tour and so on, they're very good. As you can see, it, it's uh, pretty good on the energy return, decent spin potential and energy loss. Like It's a quality string. The, you can read all the numbers here and you see that it's a quality string. Still, I think Nicola will get to that. He needs to string it low. So if we look at Hawk Touch, they don't have the numbers there in the 125. So we, let's look at the 120. It's a little bit lower and, and it still has the same spin potential, a bit more energy return. So I would say the Touch version of Head Hawk is is my preferred string if I have to you know uh, compare those two? Not all of them, but the head hawk in particular will give you a lot of responsiveness. You're gonna feel a lot of comfort playing with this string on a scale from one to ten. I'm gonna give the head hawk an eight out of ten. In other words, this string will do a lot of the work for you. You're not gonna have to swing that hard, and that's gonna translate to more playability, an ease of play, and it's gonna be safer for your arm. Now, because this is a monofilament string, you don't have to string it below 50. I would string this string anywhere between 50 and 55 pounds. If you're someone that likes lower tensions in general, you could string this below 50 pounds, but just mind you that this is not gonna behave the same way the 4G behaves, and it might be a little bit trampoline if you string this one at 35 pounds, for example. So my recommendation for the head hawk monofilament is that you stay between 50 and 55 pounds. Do not string above 55 because even here, the higher you go in attention, the less responsive the string is going to be and it's going to lose all its benefits for the recreational level. Coming in at number two is the Wilson Natural Gut. Now, the reason why I didn't use the Babolat BS Touch Natural Gut because the Wilson Natural Gut is a lot cheaper than the Babolat Natural Gut, which is the most expensive tennis string on the market. And why is Natural Gut a good solution? Yeah, it's uh, it's good that he points out gut, like it's sometimes a forgotten string uh, option uh, that you can actually play with gut even these days. I do recommend generally using it in a hybrid uh, unless you're you're maybe a new player, then you can definitely play with gut. I think I strung up gut in my mother. She's a beginner, her racket, and it's worked well, well for her. She didn't like the feeling at first compared to playing with polyesters, uh, which she did in the beginning before I got involved. 
and uh, but after a while she started feeling that her arm felt much better after playing so i think it's a great string but you don't have to go all the way to playing full bed of gut unless you have arm issues you can actually play if you want a bit more spin potential on your your strings you could actually play it in a hybrid and for for maximum gut feel in the racket uh, maximum power and so on you would put the the gut in the main strings and put like a, a you know a soft maybe poly in the crosses and do the gut at a higher tension maybe 53 55 pounds and you do the poly at a lower tension maybe 51 pounds for example and it could be a soft uh, round poly for example it could be all the power as well in a hybrid i think it, it, it's pretty decent rs leon you know a lot of a lot of good round strings out there uh, and I like a round string so it doesn't really grab the, the gut and, and reduce the lifespan of the gut. A coated string that has some kind of silicone infusion on the string so it actually moves a bit better because the gut can really be, uh, in a way, like locking the string. So you don't want that. Uh, it's going to reduce your spin potential a bit. You need the string to move and come back into to place. But uh, yeah, gut should be on the list. Uh, but yeah, I, I would pro probably expect to see maybe a multi-filament string, a good one coming up. The recreational level. Well, first of all, this is a string that can be combined into hybrid setups really well. So any of the strings that I mentioned previously will go perfectly together in a hybrid setup where you go half natural gut and half polyester. You can also go full bad natural gut. And what you're going to have? you're going to have the perfect combination of responsiveness, control, and feel. So on a scale from 1 to 10, I'm going to rate the Wilson Natural Gut a 7 out of 10 for responsiveness. But it's a string that's not so stiff. It's a very elastic string. It's also a string that's going to fray. So none of the other strings that I mentioned will fray on you, but this string will fray. So it's not a string that's very durable. Also, if you expose these strings to weather conditions such as humidity or rain, this string will not handle those conditions too well. So it is very expensive. It doesn't last very long, but the playability is phenomenal. I agree. Yeah, it's great. Got this. Uh, cannot be overlooked. And coming in at number one, the greatest recreational level string in the history of tennis is Kirschbaum Super Smash in a super thin gauge at 1.23 millimeters. Now, I'm going to make a disclaimer. I do have a relationship with Kirschbaum, and if you're interested in buying this string, I'm going to put a link in my description. You're going to get 10% off. But for you guys that know me well, you know that I was recommending this string this is true. He was actually recommending the string. It's not like a bought ad, and he's he's a very honest guy. I, I know Nicola personally, and, and I really respect him a lot. Very nice guy, very knowledgeable, and this is why I'm even reacting to his video. Uh, but let's look at Kirschbaum. I never tried his string, so I can't really say that it's it's number one here. Um, I, I don't know what I would put as number one. We might get to that. Let's see. Super Smash. Here it is. One twenty-five. It doesn't. It's, there's no one twenty-three here. It's not too uh, powerful. You see the energy return being 83%. Spin potential is good, close to six. That's very nice. And uh, stiffness is around all the power. If I can put all the power here, you can see, for example, that this string is actually kind of similar, at least in terms of the ratings to all the power. Uh, so you see here, all the power is 209. Tension loss, 48, 47, 83, 85, 57, 58. So, I feel like that this string could be good, but it, it looks, you know, I haven't played it, but it looks similar to like an all the power in the in the way it's it's ranked. Maybe it has a softer feel that is not in the metrics here, but looking at the data, they seem very, very similar. Uh, I would recommend towards club level players, I'm sure if you want to get into the poly game, there's so many softer polys that are good. Toraline Caviar, I usually talk about that one. That's a great polyester string. Uh, there's... Um, Hyper G Soft, as I talked about, Torbite Soft is also there. It's a little bit firmer than Hyper G Soft. Hyper G Soft I've used a lot. Different gauges, 120 softer, 125 a little bit more control. Vocal Cyclone Tour, also another soft, very good polyester string. I mean, it does drop tension a little bit. So if you want to look at strings that drop tension, I mean, for example, like one of the, the worst ones in my experience uh, is the Wilson uh, Revolve Spin. So here's the thicker gauge. 
and you will see a 54% tension loss here. And that that's that's a little bit much, you know, and its spin potential is pretty good. Stiffness is, is very nice in terms that it's extremely soft, but it does dip tension very quickly. So I, I don't tend to recommend that one because you do uh, have that tension problem. Yonex Polytor Air is also another very, very soft string. You see the stiffness is even close to 150. Uh, tension loss a little bit less than, than the, the Revolve. Spin potential a bit lower, but energy return very good. So Polytor Air is a good softer polyester as well. And for example, we have some strings that have the soft version, like Olive Power Soft, uh, where you see the very good spin potential, medium stiffness there, uh, but not too bad of a tension loss. Olive Power Soft is used by, for example, uh, the Italian player. What's his name? Not Musetti. Uh, Lo Lorenzo. Another, another Lorenzo. I can't think of the name. He's a very good player. He uses Olive Power Soft. Those are some strings that I would advise, like softer polyesters. I mean, the issue with a softer polyester, they do drop tension. You don't get quite the same control. Maybe this one has a bit of a mix, uh, so I'm not going to crap on it because I haven't tried it. But it's, it's not, in my head, maybe the most logical choice. That's that's a little bit what I'm, I'm thinking. For free, without being associated with Kirschbaum, you guys would always ask, Nick, what's that orange string on your racket? And I would gladly tell you what it is. And a lot of you guys went out and purchased this string. Now, also, many of you guys send me emails, DMs, comments of how this string saved you from tennis elbow. And this is a string that I personally use because despite having a high-level background, I never adapted to those dead strings in the early 2000s. I'm the type of guy that likes the help of the string. I can control the string really well, but I need a little bit of help. When I put a string on my racket that's too dead, I don't like playing with it. So is this string the same as those strings that I loved in the 90s? No, it's not. Because even the Kirschbaum Super Smash, which has been around for more than 30 years, has changed over the years. But it is still a monofilament polyester string that is fantastic for the recreational level. And why? Because on a responsiveness scale from 1 to 10, I'm going to rate this string a 9 out of 10. The name does it a lot of justice. You're going to hit Super Smashes out there. The ball is going to pop off your strings like crazy. Now, because this string is very responsive. You can safely string it between 50 and 55 pounds. If you go towards 60 pounds, you're going to get into a little bit of trouble. If you go towards 65 pounds, this string is going to feel dead like any other strings. Also, if you string this string too loosely, if you go into the 30s, it will feel a little bit like a trampoline. So guys, there you have it. These are my top five strings for the recreational level and the pro level. Now, a lot of you guys are wondering, hey, Nick, why didn't you mention any multi-filament string or synthetic gut strings. I'm going to tell you why. While these strings are soft, now a lot of people only look at the softness of this string and they relate the softness of the string to this type of string being good for the arm. I don't see it that way and I have a lot of experience in the recreational tennis world. I can tell you that the multi-filament string, the synthetic gut strings can cause problems because they are not very responsive. They're somewhere in the middle of the responsiveness scale, generally around a 5 out of 10. Of course, we can't generalize all strings. All strings are going to be a little bit different. Multifilaments also fray, just like the natural gut, and it's unfortunate. Interesting. Okay, so he's not a big fan of, of uh, multifilament strings. I, I do actually like multifilaments, and I think there are some very good ones out there. I do get the sense that the trend is moving away from multifilament. People are not so happy to play with multifilament strings because of the lack of spin potential, and they start moving. You have to move the strings back. And if you're curious about this topic, I, I will publish that video about you know multifilament versus monofilament. It's, it's maybe more of a sweeping statement. I would say, like for example, I love head velocity MLT. I, I never had any arm problems with that. Feels like a pillow, but still a bit control doesn't work for me quite to get the control I want. And I think there's a point to be made for uh, co-poly strings being, you know, strung low. That's really where I'm I'm seeing a trend and I'm really seeing that most players should probably go for that. And you can even combine two different co-poly strings. I'm testing some combinations now from Torline, for example. Casper uh, Rude uses Polytor Pro and Polytor Spin. Uh, so there are more players using hybrid setups uh, from also two different copolis or monofilaments. So uh, not 100% agreeing. Uh, I do like that he has a pretty clear opinion about this and that there is a, a thought that not all multifilaments or not all the ways you're using multifilaments are just like go ahead and do it because 
I've seen people respond differently to softer rackets and stiffer rackets. Some get tennis elbow from stiffer rackets, strung with the stiff poly usually, while some people have more problems with a flexible racket because it's you know harder to find a sweet spot. It does vibrate a lot more if you hit outside the sweet spot. So it's a bit relying on that. You need to work harder to get the same power. Some players love the soft, flexible feel. Some players get arm problems from that more than they do from stiffer rackets. So it's a very personal problem. There are no real blanket statements. I have seen in my history more problems coming from stiff rackets than soft rackets, but I've also seen problems from softer rackets because of that lack of help. And I mean, if you keep hitting the ball in the sweet spot, that's great, but the sweet spots on softer rackets are usually smaller. And I think that's really where what you can see. So I would definitely focus more on your string choice and your tension, uh, maybe than the racket uh, in most cases, unless you're really noticing problems with the with the racket, uh, giving you your arm issues. All right, that's a little bit off, top, off topic. Let's see what Nicola finishes off about these multi-filament strings. The string that's very durable, unlike the natural gut. So what happens to a lot of recreational players when they play with multi-filament is that the string ends up fraying and fraying and fraying until there's like a little piece of fiber left on the racket and it just won't pop. Now, when the string disintegrates in this way, of course, it's going to be less and less playable and more and more dead and it loses its so important responsiveness. When we're talking about synthetic gut, this is a very cheap string that is of a very low quality. And when you play with synthetic gut, the strings are going to be moving all over the place. The string is not very responsive. And while this might be an okay solution for beginner level players, it's not a string that I recommend generally for the recreational level. Because here's what you have to understand. Responsiveness is the number one factor that most of you guys are looking for. Of course, not all of you. Why? Because you want the string to help you out. When you hit the ball, you don't want the ball to be dead on your racket and you having to swing like a lunatic. You want the string itself to have enough power where you don't have to do as much work. The reason why you won't find any soft polyester strings in my top five is because very similarly to the multi-filament and the synthetic gut, a softer polyester string loses and its responsiveness. So while soft polyester strings might be better options for the recreational level compared to some of the strings that are used on a professional tour, the biggest factor for recreational players when selecting strings is responsiveness, which directly translates into less effort being exerted, resulting in more comfort and less risk for injury. All right, interesting one. Thanks, Nicola. That was great. Uh, thanks for letting me... Um react to your video. So to conclude my opinions about, about Nicholas' video, I, I agree with many things. I like the idea of responsiveness. I think that's a, a great way of putting it. I do feel like RPM Blast is still a pretty firm string. All the power, also a pretty firm string. Um, never tried Super Smash. It's always, a, you know, a little bit complicated when, when this is a string you personally love. But if he's recommended it to other players and, and they don't have any problems with it, then maybe it's a great string. Like I said, I haven't tried it. There are many good uh, softer polys out there. I mentioned Toraline Caviar. I mentioned Solinko Hyper G Soft, uh, two of my favorites. Uh, but as he said, like they do drop tension a little bit faster, so it's good to keep that in mind. And you can take a firmer polyester as long as it's responsive, which is, I think, the main recommendation and outtake of this video, and actually string it a bit lower, going down 40, 44 pounds, or even lower than that, and get some more responsiveness from the string. I completely agree that it's important to have something free from the string. Don't string it like a board unless you're pro or close to pro level, because then the, you know then you need to really hit the ball, every ball you, you, you can, with max power. Uh, sometimes I think uh, recreational players, uh, such as myself, you know, we we sometimes get the feeling that we want to be able to swing out, but maybe we don't really swing out, especially when we play matches on 90% of the shots. Maybe we swing out on when we're hitting, you know, practicing, and then we get to a match and we're pushing the ball around. And if you're going to do the pushy game, maybe you want a little bit more, you know, help from the string. But generally, it's about learning to manage the ball with topspin and work on your anticipation. It's something I realized when the more I play tournaments, the more I play series matches, uh, the more I realize it's all up to my work, how much I work on the court, and uh, and to be able to hit with enough spin, enough action on the ball to get the ball to to land in. 
uh, using spin is, is a very powerful weapon. Playing too flat has hurt me in the past, and it's something I, I'm trying to work you know, a little bit out of my game, not to be too flat. I do like playing aggressive. It's, it's a part of, of growing up watching a lot of Roger Federer, but uh, you do feel like, like you, your margins are shrinking. So I like Nicholas' video. I like his talks about this topic. He's a great guy. Recommend his other stuff as well. So, so the choices. Maybe I'll, I'll add some more, uh, you know, softer polys, like I mentioned. But the, that the Luxlon strings uh, were key in changing the game. I agree with. Not sure where I would place RPM Blast on that responsiveness scale. I do think that Luxlon 4G is an amazing string, but sadly, it's a little bit of an arm breaker. So there, you need to, really need to listen to Nicola and string it low. Uh, because it's great. And I hope to try now the Kirschbaum Super Smash since it seems to be a, a string he loves so much. But sometimes if you play with a string for long, it can also be a little bit of bias in your own head. Uh, right now, I'm going to play a tournament in a few hours and I'm uh, going to use Confidential because I do like the spin potential. It is a firmer string. Uh, so I will see if I can keep using that. I'm also testing some Toraline hybrid setups similar to the one that Karu is endorsing. So uh, we will see where I end up. Thanks for watching my reaction video. I, if you like these types of videos, uh, me commenting on tennis stuff, let me know and I'll do more. That's it. Have a nice day. And don't forget to play some tennis.